aim higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. Shout Alleluia. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. Everybody shout Alleluia. Alleluia. Shout Alleluia. Alleluia. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. We lift your name higher. Shout Ale, Alleluia. Shout Ale, Alleluia. Shout Ale, Alleluia. You are welcome. All our viewers, you are welcome from different parts of the world. Welcome to Ask a Question Brokers, the Monday's edition. Please share, share, share. Everybody keep sharing. We want a high traffic tonight as usual. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. I hope a reminder was sent out today. Did you receive any reminder? Any of us online already? Do you receive any reminder today from our line managers? You are welcome. You are welcome. All of you welcome. Okay. Vera Richard said no, daddy. So no reminder was sent today. So a media director, why should you stop sending reminder? It helps more people to remember and to join. Welcome, 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 welcome. Everybody welcome, okay? Longley say yes, sir. Some, somebody is saying yes, sir. And somebody is saying no reminder was sent. Somebody is saying he received reminder. Anyway, this is... Uh, an interactive broadcast where we give direction, where we give counseling and mentoring, clarification. This is issue based, issue driven. Life is full of issues. This program is driving issues of life. Everybody has some issues of life, and in most instances, people have nobody to talk to, people suffer in silence. Don't suffer in silence. Let's have your views. State your situation. Ask a question. Describe what you are passing through. For we should desire guidance. I mean, answers applicable to life, biblical, spiritual, and deep. That is what you will get here. So everybody keep sharing, okay? I've seen more people saying they got a reminder. I've seen more people saying, they got a reminder today. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Every one of you go to your share button and start sharing. Let everyone connected to you also be connected to this broadcast. And remember, you can make contributions. Make your contributions on issues at hand. These are issues. These are real life issues. Human beings go through real life issues health financial career marriage family social all kinds of issues spiritual physical mental psychological what are the issues what are your questions what are you struggling with what are you passing through for which you desire clarification counseling answers directives instructions let's know you will receive wise counsel here yeah? spiritual biblical practical void of sentiment real applicable to your situation and every issue you present or situation you describe is also describing the situation of many other people and every answer we give or counsel we give is also for many other people 
Let's help our world. Let's help our generation. Let's deliver people from ignorance, from exploitation, from blindness, from trial and error. Let's share principles. Let's give counsel. Then prayers. Type in your prayer request too. God answers our prayers on this platform. Then share your testimonies. What In what areas of life have you seen the hand of God in your life and situations? As you connect to all our prophetic impartations and directive, share your testimony. It will bless other people. Welcome. Type your name, the city and the country where you are joining us from. Your name, the city and the country where you are joining us from. Tony Point is a global family. So when we know your name, the city and the country, and we are all reading it online, it will convince us more, establish the fact that we are a global community. God bless you, a global family. Your name, Ola Teju Ogunshe from Ibadan. Bosse Akinshola, you didn't tell us where you are from. On YouTube, Mibel Emeng, from Abel Kota. On YouTube, you are welcome. Babe or Babe Chibungu from Dublin, from Dublin. God bless you, you are welcome. Rita Samuel from United Kingdom. Oh, oh. Stanley Oyebuchi from Kano. God bless you, Stanley. Everybody, YouTube is on, so reach out. And if you are joining this broadcast for the first time today, please indicate. I'm a first time I hear, I'm a first joiner here. I'm joining this for the first time. And let Tony Point Global Family welcome people as they indicate that they are joining us for the first time. Uh, Bumi, on, you are welcome. You are welcome, everybody. On Instagram, you are welcome. That is from Texas, USA. You are welcome. From Texas, you are welcome. All right. Lucy Izechi Okoji from Brazil, all the way from Brazil. This is a global family. Ide Ogo from Delta State. God bless you. Umukoro Emmanuel from Delta Sapele. Agata Oulabi from Ibadan. Thank God for another evening, another time of fellowship, fellowshipping, sharing, enjoying the word of God. Justina from Abuja. God bless you, everybody. Keep sharing. Okay, Ajara Awudi. I am a first time here on Facebook. Let's welcome Ajara. Israel Abutu. I love you, sir. I also love you. Israel, I love you. Your name is beautiful. Israel. <laughs> Israel. Everybody keep sharing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Hello, Nora, from Italy, from Italy, God bless you. Joke Udumade on YouTube from Lagos. Love you, love you, love you. Everybody, keep sharing. Oh, I want a higher traffic tonight. That traffic is not like hard, uh, rich enough. Let's keep sharing. Share, 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 share. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. God bless you. Let me go to your share button, please. This program is not meant for a few, for the whole world. Let's drive it. Let's drive it. Let's drive it. God bless you. All right. Olaide Olatumbo from Italy, Ogo State. God bless you. Everybody, look at, uh, read the information on the screen. And if you need, such information please you make use of it our media team are throwing information type in your testimony in the comment bar while a live stream is on all right that is send your testimonies your questions and inquiries for commissions account requests via whatsapp to plus two three four eight zero nine seven eight nine four thousand all these things are on the screen or read them and then we go. Can we can we start? Can we start? Issues are already here. Issues sent in after Friday's broadcast. Get ready to make your contributions. 
And if the counsel I give, the mentoring I give, resonate with you, support me. So that people can know, yes, what you said is right. That is right, daddy. That is right, pastor. And of course, if you have your own contributions, please make it. Daddy, what is your take on people that do not see anything good in others? What is your take on people that do not see anything good in others? <laughs> That's an affliction. When you don't see anything good in other people, do you see anything good in yourself? No, every human being has his or her own value. We must appreciate the grace, the gifts, uh, the potentials, the result in other people so that others can also see the one in us. So people who don't see anything good in others, please distance yourself from such people. Stay away from them. They, they need help. <laughs> Let me just say they need help. But there is something good in the other person. They could be frustrated and will not see the value, the gift, and the grace on other people. We all have our areas of grace, areas of gift. No matter how bad the person is, he will still have some good aspect of him or her. So stay away from such people. Vera Richard says stay away from them. All right. I can see Manuela Bola from Columbus, Ohio, USA on YouTube. All right. Daddy, is there anything like celebrating angels with cooking food and bringing fruits to church for people to eat? Is there anything like celebrating angels with cooking food and bringing fruits to church for people to eat? <laughs> That's like what they call Sarah, where we were little kids in the village. They would do they do Sarah sacrifice for human beings and non-human beings to come and eat. And if you say that take place in a church, then that is not the kind of church we know and celebrate in the Bible. It shouldn't be. If this is taking place in a church and they are celebrating angels, we don't worship angels, we don't celebrate angels. Angels are ministering spirits to us who are the heirs of salvation. That's what the Bible says. Angels are ministering spirits unto us. We are to deploy our angels, command our angels to go on assignment for us. God gave us angels for guidance, angels, warfare, angels, uh, provision, all kinds of angels. We may not see them, but they are there. They are real. All right, but we don't worship angels. They are ministering spirits to us. So any church where angels are celebrated, food cooked, fruit brought for people to eat, there must be some strange rituals not connected with the New Testament church that we know. Muda Shiro Adereb said, I thank God that I can make it today. Yes. Please share, share, share. You know, you either watch live or watch later. Good if you watch live so that you can make contribution or watch later also. Daddy, how can I relate with a long time, like long time friend of about 10 years? How can I relate with a long time friend of about 10 years? Do you mean a friend you have not seen in the last 10 years? It looks more like that to me. How can I relate with a long time friend of about 10 years? Or is a friend and you have related for 10 years. If that friendship is profitable, friendship is supposed to be mutually profitable. In other words, you gain from me, I gain from you. Don't relate with anybody you cannot gain anything from. Anyone that is not adding to you is removing from you. But if you are talking about friends you have not seen in the last 10 years, then you need to be cautious to know who that person is now. Because 10 years is a long time. People can change at any time. People could have become something else. Can imbibe some other ideas, ways of life. And therefore, you start with a friend you have not met in 10 years as if you are just starting. Get to know them, whether they are still what you know them to be, so that you don't burn your fingers. But if you have related with somebody for 10 years and that relationship is beneficial, then keep it up. Bad people are like sand. They are found everywhere. 
Good people are scarce. So if you find a true friend, hold on to them. If you find a true friend, and a friend in need is a friend indeed. If you find a true friend, please hold on to the relationship is everything. I always say, if somebody gives you money, and that same person offer you relationship, don't take money. Take relationship. Money will finish. Relationship is everything. So that is my answer. Whether it's a person you have not seen in 10 years, or it's a person you've been dating with continuously for 10 years, because your question uh, is not clear. Please let us ask clear questions with enough details so that we can give an uh, appropriate answer and counsel and guidance. Olu Afisa, your Felicia Adedeji. More anointing, sir. I like this program. I don't want to miss it. Okay. Please share it with others. I know Olua for Olua for me, Lola Adeono. Some churches call it IPC. Where? Those are Nigerian mid churches. <laughs> Nigerian generated churches. We shouldn't worship angels. We shouldn't celebrate angels. We shouldn't cook food and saying we are celebrating angels. I don't know where they saw that anyway. Daddy, a friend molested. Let me see what is on YouTube. Samuel Oladele said, relationship is everything. Let's create one today. All right. Yet on the Oladele, very correct, sir. Even me, I have changed in 10 years. You need to start the friendship anew. That's true. That's true. First row, Adeola, we are all welcome on board. I love my daddy. Right. Vera Richard, very true, daddy, you are right. Ishola Motola, how are you, daddy and mommy? Now, please, I like more people to make contributions. Don't just stay there watching us. Make contributions. Let it be sweet. Let it be robust, if you have any. And if the uh, clarifications, the counseling, and the answers I am providing, you agree, say so. Let's, it's, it's an interactive program. Let us interact. Daddy, a father molested his 13 year old daughter and is still a pastor in one of the Pentecostal churches. Should he be reported to the church? <coughs> A father molested his 13-year-old daughter and is still a pastor in one of the Pentecostal churches. Should he be reported to the church? Yes. But my fear is, I hope this pastor, if this allegation is true, I hope it's not the, uh, the pastor founder of that church, the general overseer. Because if it's the general overseer, the pastor founder, as you see all over, proliferation of churches all over, then who will you report? The founder too. And many of them have no mentor. They are the Mesis, Mesis, Me, of their ministry. They are the Alpha and the Omega. They receive the vision. They relate to nobody. Nobody relates with them. Unfortunately, I will see some people under them. They, they are caging. They are in, they put in bondage. So if a pastor, so-called, and a father molested his 13-year-old daughter. It should be reported to the law enforcement agencies. It should be reported to the police or the agency of government responsible for the protection of minors. You have that everywhere, even in our country. But if it's a pastor under an organization, a well-established organization, and there are facts, this is not hearsay, don't let it be rumor. There are facts and evidences. Then it should be reported to the organization, church organization, under which he operates. I'm not sure there is any church that would tolerate this kind of misbehaviors. Patient said, if there is proof, yes, it should be reported. Umukoro Emmanuel, yes, I like to appear on video, all right? Risha said a big yes. Ishola Motola, I agree, sir. All right. 
There should be no cover up for such misbehavior. Yes, report to the appropriate authorities. Very, very important. There should be a way to checkmate and to discourage this kind of uh, afflictions and misbehavior in the society. Daddy, how can a mother help a daughter who, okay, Agnes Gia Oyetunji, if there is evidence to that effect, it should be reported to the police, okay? Olaide Olatumbo is one video. The pastor should be arrested as fast as possible. Rita Samuel, yes, so no cover up at all, at all. <laughs> eh. I didn't care, did they, G? Chatting from Saudi, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Wow. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His family is all over. Gide Olatunji, if it is true, sir. The pastor should be suspended immediately. All right. Daddy, how can a mother help a daughter who is 25 years old but is not interested in marriage? She's a graduate and has a good job but feels, feels she should have much money before going into any relationship. How can a mother help a daughter who is 25 years old but is not interested in marriage? She's a graduate and has a good job, but feels she should have much money before going into any relationship. It looks to me that there is a mother reporting her daughter because she knows so much about the daughter, 25 years old, a graduate, working with a good job, and a good job, but is insisting that he's not considering marriage. He wants to make money before going into any relationship. I think uh, that is not balanced. Uh, nobody needs to become a millionaire before going into marriage. All we say is that you should, first of all, build your career, be done with your education up to a level, first degree, perhaps master's, perhaps, or if you didn't take that route, your HND, learn a trade, uh, have develop a skill. You must have something to earn a living. And you also start building a financial life. Have a good job and income. But it's not that you want to have much money before going into a relationship. And this is a daughter. You, you don't go out looking for a spouse. It's young men that would look for you. So at 25, wonderful. You are a graduate, beautiful. You have a job, beautiful is enough. Make sure you are getting married to somebody who also is visionary. He has a job, he has a vision, he's earning a good income, and the two of you can build up together. So it is wrong for a lady to say, to say until I have much money, I'm not going to relationship. Relationship will not wait for you. Men will not wait for you. So, it is good to have a clear vision, have a career, develop a skill, have a good job, and have a clear vision of life, and be careful who you bring into that vision, or who you join to run his vision. Because a man and a woman coming together in marriage should run a joint vision. Their purpose has been matched, and their vision has been matched, and they should run it together. But for a lady to say, until I make much money, that to me does not sound very wise. Because by the time money comes, your social equals may no longer be there. Those toasting you now, asking you out, interested in you, and you are bluffing, may not be there for you anymore. So a lady does not really have that latitude to say, I will make enough money before I consider relationship. It should be uh, uh, done pari passu, right? But you must know that you have a career, your education is right, and the man coming into your life is also busy, actively busy, visionary, and the two of you can run together 
because you are friends. Right? Aha, uh -huh. people are already responding. Yes, sir. Her husband will compliment her finances. If she is too independent, she may scare away suitor. Yes. If she's too independently minded, no man wants to marry her boss or his boss. No one wants to marry a woman that they cannot relate and flow together. Or because she has a good job or he has money. That would be a wrong approach. Alright. What is on YouTube? Okay, YouTube is he talking about the pastor that is uh, abusing his daughter? Precious said, I am from Spain. All right, all right, all right. So, on YouTube, I agree with you, I agree with your counsel, sir. May Almighty God help our guests these days, <laughs> our guests these days. Our guests these days, may Almighty God help you <laughs> to be able to balance your life. Balance your career life with marriage life. The Lord will bless you. Husband and wife should compliment one another. You compliment yourself. You don't need to have, even for young men, you don't need to have everything before you say, I will consider marriage. Once the foundation is well laid, career, education, good job, good vision, purpose clarified, then you are good to go and build up. All right? La Princess say, you are very right, sir. God bless you. Rita Samuel on YouTube said, you have said it all, sir. More anointing. All right? Let's move on. Are you being blessed? Please, if you are joining us for the first time, please indicate. If today is your first day, first time of joining us on Ask Your Question broadcast with Femi Manuel, please indicate. I'm a first timer. I'm joining this broadcast for the first time. Some of you could have been Turning Point Global Family members, receiving Turning Point Daily Devotion, but this may be the first time you are joining us on this live broadcast. This live broadcast comes out two days a week, Mondays and Fridays, 9.30 to 10.40 p.m. West African time. If today is your first day of joining us on this broadcast, indicate and let Tony Point Global Family members on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, where they are indicating their presence, please welcome them. Okay, I am princess. Yes, sir. My first time here. Everybody, welcome, princess. Welcome, princess. God bless you. Ishola Motola, I am blessed. Agatha Wolabi, I am really blessed, daddy. Ola Rewaju Samuel, as my son. Yes, we have been blessed. Olufumi Lola, allow me. I am watching. Odila Obina Henry. I am a first-timer. I'm joining this for the first time. Please welcome Obina. Let them feel belong. Precious, yes, sir. My first time here on YouTube. Maya Alabi on YouTube. Uluwa Kemi, first-timer, sir. Okay? Please be welcoming them. Mention their name back to them and welcome them. Okay? As they are indicating, okay, I can see my first time here. Justina. Yes, I like your lady. What you say? You are welcome, princess. Yes. Adiboye Folake Adiat. So blessed. Ah, God bless you. I like you, Adiat. All right, let's push it further. Please make your contribution. Make your contribution. How can the mother help a daughter? Okay, we have said that. Uh, Daddy, what should I do? My wife asked me for money to buy everything. Yet, she's also working. <laughs> All wives, listen and wives to be. What should I do? My wife asked me money for everything, yet he's also working. <laughs> I think husband and wife, this must be young couple. Husband and wife, one of the things you should discuss, even before your wedding, during courtship, these are the things to discuss. How are you going to do your money management? You are working, I am working. 
I'm earning an income, you are earning an income. We are coming together as husband and wife. How are we going to manage money affairs? Is it going to be contributory? Or is the husband going to say, well, the husband is the provider. Don't worry, I'll be providing everything. Or it's going to, to be said, look, what else can you bring? I pay for the house rent and uh, the running the home, the feeding, the bills. If you are running a car, the fuel, what are you going to join me in doing? There must be discussion around that area. There must be discussion around that area. So that you will not get inside it and you are having this kind of problem. And of course, yes, from the biblical point of view, the husband should be the chief provider for the home. If a man cannot provide for his house, the Bible says he has denied the faith. Is worse than an infidel. But in the social economy situation of today, in the reality of today, husband and wife should team up together to build their life. Don't forget I have always advocated family business. Means of income. The first thing a young couple should build in life is to build their home and also build their financial base. Something they can retire into. Something their children can come into. The days of I bet to apply for your children, those days are gone. I bet to apply in other people's organization, other people's father's organization. So what will you tell your children you have used your whole life to do? So, and it has to start early. Husband and wife should join hands together, save money, and then towards a purpose. But to start with, there must be discussion and agreement on money management in the house. I don't know what others are saying. I would want to see your contribution. Oh, nobody is making contribution on this very important issue. Patients are worried about you are laughing. <laughs> okay. Please let me have, make your contributions. My wife asked me money for everything, yet she's working. It's a real issue. It's a real issue. It has brought problems in many homes. And many don't know how to manage it. I have said these are things you ought to have discussed and agreed. And you keep reviewing it. Because you are going to be earning more and getting more promotion, earning more income. But don't forget, no matter how much you earn, you must save towards investment. And if you can do it jointly, better. If you trust each other and you are transparent with each other. All right, Deborah made dupe on YouTube, the wife should build her career to the level that she will be earning good money and not depend on her husband. Now, this husband is saying the wife is asking him for money on everything and is he earning, not contributing towards running the home. First, Adeola, she must have been a spoiled wife, <laughs> especially with the opinion that the husband is the head and supposed to take. Its responsibility as the chief provider for the home, <laughs> as for its daughter. Uh, but the reality of today is that the two hands, like I keep saying, look at my illustration. If you want to wash your hands under a running tap, the right hand must wash the left hand. And after that, the left hand must wash the right hand. They must wash each other. One single hand cannot wash itself. Can you see? The right Washing the left, the left coming back to wash the right. So that is a message from God. The two must join hand and plan their financial life together. Provided there is trust, there is transparency, there is no suspicion, there is no hide and seek game. Husband and wife should work together and be the financial life for themselves and for their children. Okay, the cardinal God bless their marriage is partnership, not parasitic relationship. I like that. Not parasitic relationship. It should be partnership. Yes, Daddy, you are right. But I feel a woman should be ready to support the man at all times. But the husband should not expect from the wife. He is the chief provider for the home. That's Olu Fisayo and your daily. Mm, Vera Richard, you are right, Daddy. Very true. Agatha Wolabi, I don't think she asked for anything but maybe for almost all the home needs they need to come around table around the table 
and have an agreement on how to run their homes. Magdalene Matthew, that is wrong. Ha, that is wrong. Precious, that's very wrong. Okay? I they don't care I did they do on YouTube. They should have an open discussion on this. The wife might not understand financial management in marriage. The husband must apply wisdom in addressing this issue to make her adjust to support him. Wow. Deborah made up me. The wife should build her career to level. Okay, we have said that. Abibat, require women are helpers to their husband. The woman should be helping the husband. <laughs> All right, Rita Samuel, let her go for counseling because marriage is a school, no graduation at all. Claire, Claret Patrick on YouTube, it is very clear that this was not discussed during courtship. They have to come together and carefully discuss it so it does not, uh, it does not strain their marriage. Then with time, it will be resolved. All right. I have counsel on turning point family. Do what we did. Do what I did with my wife. We grew up in our marriage. And at a point, God helped us to build a financial base, to become a brand. And we have what brings money. So our issue is no longer how much do you earn, how much do I earn. Our base, our financial base, our investment over the years runs our life. Runs our life. Pay the bills. Take care of our vehicles. Take care of our travelings. Take care of everything. And that is not a one-day job. Remember, we are 40 years in marriage. That's a 40 years journey. But there are those who have done 40 years, 50 years, and they are still financially stressed because they did not build it. They did not build their financial life. A time should come in the life of a couple that your investment should run your life. Medical bills, ministry to the body of Christ, kingdom work. A time should come that the investment you have built over the years begin to run your life. That is the ultimate. That is when you can have a restful old age. If not, you just walk and pay bills until you go to your grave. And that's not the best. But as a young couple, all this advice we are throwing in, very correct. Come together, have an open discussion. Discuss it in courtship before you come together. And if you did not, discuss it now. And agree at what is mutually agreeable. Review it from time to time, but ultimately, Build a financial base, build investment, earn money without going to the office, earn money without reporting yes sir, without doing 9 to 6 or 8 to 4 later in life. The Lord bless you. Okay. Patience are with you, but maybe that's how she feels being loved by her husband but the husband is complaining she's earning her own income but depending on the husband for everything i hope it's not depending on the other for her own personal little little things but whatever the case is i think uh, good counsel has been given vera richard said i hear you papa you better hear me all of you young couples you better hear me all of you young people you better hear me build your financial life that you will rest in the evening of your life you must should be earning money without reporting to any office let your money work for you let your investment grow and begin to take care of your life till the end let your investment grow all right i was in uk less than two weeks ago or how many weeks ago all i did was to call the travel agency how much is my return ticket, business class, my accountant, please talk to her, pay the money and give me the ticket. I have worked for it. I've labored for it. My car is old. I want to change it. Accountant, 
the manager in charge, please, this is the car, talk to them, pay them, and uh, let me have the car. I've labored for it. You should labor for it also. It's not beyond anybody. But if you don't have financial intelligence, if you are not taught how to make investment, it takes time for investment to grow. You just labor and labor and labor till the end of life. That's not supposed to be. Apart from that, where will you have enough money to support the kingdom? When what you earn is barely enough to pay your bills, how will the kingdom grow? So for the sake of the kingdom, everybody should listen to this concern. We have taught again and again on money making. I wrote a whole book on why people are poor and how to have your own investment, build it over the year, and your investment should run your life at a point. Ajiboye, for lack of a true talk. Thank you, Daddy. Vera Richard, yes, sir. Okay. My life is an open book. I use my life to teach you. Don't make the mistake that I made. And don't make the mistake that many people are still making. Don't work for an organization or for government in retirement. When you retire, you will be too tired to start anything. It is better in one's younger age. Do maybe our adequate communication is very important in our relationship. All right. Let's move forward. Okay. Daddy, my husband is asking my people to refund the diary he paid. He left me and the children last year and relocated to USA. He told my people that he ran for his dear life. Wow. Do you see that? Do you see that? My husband is asking my people to refund the dowry he paid on me. He left me and the children last year and relocated to the USA. He told my people that he ran for his dear life. I mean, this is not how a marriage should be. This is marriage in ignorance, in total blindness. Husband and wife is still dead to us part. So you have a husband that is asking a refund of dowry. Left the husband, the wife and the children behind, relocated to USA. He's not asking them to come and join him. He's saying he ran for his dear life. It's unfortunate. These are marriages based on tradition, based on superstition, no understanding of marriage purpose. They didn't run it with the Bible. They didn't run it with the word of God. I mean, this is this is heartbreaking. This is heartbreaking. Well, you need to pray. You also, either, I don't know how literate you are. I don't know how informed you are to have gotten married to this kind of a man. It is sad. A lot of people are already saying it is sad. It is sad. It shouldn't be. This is not how God meant it. Remember, God is the initiator of marriage. And that's, I keep saying, I wrote a book here on marriage success secret. Marriage is God's invention. And if you are going to marry, marry according to God's prescription. Do not be unequally yoked together with the unbeliever. A husband that is asking for refund of dowry, left a wife and the children, relocated back to USA, and he's saying he's running for his dear life. Oh, who is what's pursuing him? Who is pursuing him? Is it you? Or village witches and community wizards? People who can't, who don't know exactly what marriage is. Well, the Lord will see you through. Daddy, I am an unmarried lady of 40 years. What should I do? Should I relocate, sir? <laughs> this is another issue. 40 years lady, not married. What should I do? Should I relocate? I don't think relocation will give you husband. I don't think so. I don't know. Please, if I am wrong, correct me. I think it's easier to get a spouse back home in Nigeria or in Ghana or whatever your home country where you schooled, where you grew, where you make friends than to relocate to countries and environment where you know virtually nobody. 
I know there is nothing God cannot do, but I think spouses are easier to get back here than there. <laughs> Husbands are scarce in UK, in US, in Europe. They are scarce. Oh, those of you there, please talk to me. <laughs> I think I think it's easier here among friends and social equals you grew together you school together you're in the same church same community family to family i think it will be much easier i don't think getting a husband in europe in uk in america in canada is that cheap although i know there is nothing god cannot do but that is my own take and then wow and why are you 40 years a lady and no, yet not yet married. Like I said, you must have missed some opportunities. When you are in your 22, 24, 25, 26, 30, opportunities must have come. But maybe there was no mentor, there was no understanding to choose right. Or you were too long in a relationship with somebody who eventually disappointed you. These are the reasons why somebody, a lady can grow to 40 and no marriage. And that's a result of disappointment or or some other some other disappointment mainly or opportunities came and she didn't see it and didn't seize it there's no one god will not give opportunity to but there are those who don't see it there are those who don't seize it and i keep warning all my daughters don't be too long in a relationship with a man that is not serious courtship or relationship for marriage should not be too long when it is too long, two things are likely to happen. Sinning. Begin to take yourself to bed. And to go to bed once is the most difficult. After the first one, you do it all the time. Then people start doing abortion. And after the wife, the man says, I don't do again. The woman is left hot and dry on the shelf. Or opportunities came. You didn't take it serious. And they left. But at 40, you will still get married. As to relocate, because you didn't get a husband here, I think that's not the best. Okay, let me listen. Many of you are abroad, those of you in UK, those of you in America, those of you in Canada, talk to us. You know better what I'm, what I'm saying is right. Magdalene Matthew said, easier in your country. Aha. Patients are worried about said I have all messages from 2020. Okay. Ishola or Motola. Yes, so very scarce. <laughs> Patients said, yes, so laughing. Olushola Lawrence, yes, daddy. Men are many, but real husbands are very scarce. I advise our sister to see God's face for her favorite husband. Adiboye for Lake Adiat. Advise any single ladies. I want to travel to get married before and I want to travel to get married before coming because it is not easy to get a man abroad. They are all looking for a woman who has papers. <laughs> who can use her citizenship to help them stay. <laughs> that did not much I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Vera Richard say you are right, Daddy. Patience is just laughing. Modupeola Ruben, it is not easy to get spouse abroad. Magdalene Matthew, exactly. Agatha will be sometimes lazy at to choose it with high demand. Can I see what's happening on YouTube? Do maybe Daddy, you are very correct. Or like the other tumbles on YouTube, you are correct, sir. Relocation is not the solution to her problem. Yes, I think so too. Relocation will make it more difficult to marry. I live in the UK, so I know what I'm talking about. Maybe work or bless you. I want those who live in UK, those who live in America, those who live in Europe, those who live in Canada, those who live abroad to talk to us. Can I relocate? I'm 40 years, no husband. Can I relocate to get a husband or relocate? If you relocate, you wish to marry no husband, you'll be more frustrated, you'll be more lonely. 
I want you to believe God for your own spouse here before relocation. Clarence Patrick, there is no wisdom in relocating for the sole purpose of marriage. What happens to other aspects of your life? Relocation should be done only by God's leading. Wow. Margaret, my wider, is she relocating to go and get married or marriage is out of the way? So you need to tell us. Samuel Ola, the husband is, car, is a scarce commodity. <laughs> Taiwan de Ola, daddy, kindly pray for me, sir. I have been okay. It will be okay. That's another prayer request. David Olufemi Bokola, women can help us men. So we rather go for those who are true helpmates. Obasi, Dr. Professor Kani, loneliness is worse abroad. It's not by location. I think so too. Joker Oduma Day, relocation will complicate issues, man. Age is not on your side, look inward, man. Olufisayo, if she is led by God to relocate, let her do. But relocating because of marriage is not a good reason for relocation. Patience, you are right, sir. Husband, not this how, but men are many. Ha! Men are many, husband materials are few. But God has a purpose and a plan for all his children, including marriage. So even at 40, God will still see you through. Follow all our teachings and you will see so. Mudupe, I stay in UK, single, male and female, complain bitterly here. All right? Please read the rest. Uh, people are still making contributions. I've seen people getting married at 40, 45, you will get married. Daddy, what should I do? I'm always thinking of divorce in my marriage. Wow. Do you see that? They allow a journey. Most of the time outside the country, you spend most of your time securing livelihood and papers. <laughs> livelihood and papers. Especially those that are there illegally and they don't want to legalize their stay there. It's not very easy. All kinds of maneuvering, all kinds of wayo, all kind of papers, all kind of practices. So please trust God, He will bring your husband. What should I do? I'm all, I am always thinking of divorce in my marriage. Uh, number one, I don't know whether it is a man or a woman, but most likely the man, I don't know. You didn't indicate whether you are a man or a woman, but to be thinking of divorce in your marriage is evil. God hates divorce. Again, getting married in ignorance. Getting married to somebody you don't love, somebody you are not friendly with, somebody you are not convinced. How can you be thinking of divorce? That's an evil thought. Cast it out. The Bible says, pulling down all stronghold and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Pray against this. Two warfare prayers. These are evil thoughts. You must cast down and cast out. Why must you be thinking of divorce in your marriage all the time? Why? Marriage is for life. According to God's word, you are supposed to love each other. Adi Allah, Jenny say, yes, sir. All right? Vera, Alicia, say, Daddy, you are right. Thank you, more grace. Please let no husband or wife be thinking of divorce. If that comes across your mind, resist it, reject it, cast it out. It's an evil thought. You must not entertain that. No matter, even if you marry blindly, even if you marry in ignorance, now that you are inside the marriage, trust God to help you love your wife and your husband. Trust God to help you come together. And, and, and push on. What about the children? What about your life? What about your testimony? What about your ministry? No, no, no. Please reject that thought and cast it out. I know most people, many people feel this way also. There are many husbands and wives that regretted marrying each other. But whether you did it rightly or wrongly, once married, remain married. Once married, remain married. God will give you the grace. 
All the apostles said, three times I prayed for God to remove this thorn from my flesh. Nobody knows what that thorn in the flesh of Paul is up to today. But he said, God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. So, for husband and wife, whether you married knowingly or unknowingly, whether you married your friend or not, whether you are knowledgeable in marriage or you went into it blindly, once you are married and you want to remain a child of God, please remain married and ask God for grace to carry on. You shall not mortal as say divorce, Holy Ghost fire. Are they lake? Are they me? You are right. No room for divorce in Christian marriage. Right? And near computer, yes, sir. You are correct, sir. Right? What is happening on YouTube? Alex Coleman. Daddy, what would I? Okay. Yes, so. Flourish, flourish and flourish. I know somebody is going to talk today. Good evening, Daddy. I love your attire. It looks good on you. I know somebody will still talk about that one. God bless you. Somebody give me oh. Somebody give Daddy. Somebody make it for made it for me. All right. So divorce is not an option. Daddy, is it advisable to make love with a guy who has not paid my bride price? Just because I'm not a virgin, is it advisable to make love with a guy? It's not advisable. Can you make love before marriage? We have said that sex is beautiful and godly inside marriage. Outside marriage is ungodly, it's sinful. So why should you be asking me whether you should make love with a guy who has not paid your bride price? You are not yet married, properly married. Because you are not a virgin. What's the, what's the relationship between you being a virgin or not and going to bed with somebody you are not married to? So please uh, get to know that sexual intercourse, conjugal relationship is allowed godly inside a proper marriage, not outside of it. What if you start taking you to bed and then dump you? Say so he doesn't want you anymore. What are you going to do? You are not yet married. So please, you see, those that are married are thinking of divorce. Not to talk of those who are not yet married. He hasn't paid your bride price. Why? Is he serious with that relationship? Or does he not have an income? Or does he not want you? So please, uh, coming together for conjugal relationship is the last after proper marriage. Daddy, what is your take on newly wedded couples attending different churches? <laughs> Newly wedded. Okay, can draw a line and pray. Flourish, Florence, flourish. Why should you be asking that the jump question? <laughs> Don't divide the baby family. Thank you, Jerry. Why should you be asking that the jump question? Why a question? <laughs> Wasting my time. Somebody has not paid your bride price. You are not yet married. You are saying whether you should go to bed. What kind of person is this? So people are not yet born again. People don't know Chris. They don't know their left from their right. Uh, this program is to please set you right. Get to know Jesus. Be in a good church. And be taught. I don't expect this kind of question. At this level. Anyway, we are dealing with different kind of people. We don't even know who we are talking to. So we are answering all questions. Magdalene Matthew is laughing. Ajiboye Folake Adiat is laughing. <laughs> all right. So, do maybe say it is not advisable as you give your life to Christ. Ask as you give your life to Christ, to, to Jesus, you become a new person and the old thing must be passed. Jude Clement say, how bad? Which kind of question is this? Can you see me? See me see trouble. <laughs> well, we must answer all questions because we don't know who we are helping. We don't know who we are talking to. All kinds of people are on this platform those that are mature those that are not those that are born again those that are not born again those that are born again and they are not deep they are not they are not established and that's the purpose of this platform to teach people the ways of god to teach people the way of life and please connect to turning point global family
so that every morning you receive 10 to 12 minutes ministration, inspiration, impartation, two weeks for questions and answers, two weeks for testimonies, every day for prophetic prayers and prophetic action, in the prophetic faith action. It will, it will be a blessing. We learn more about it. Patience are with you, but pray over the oil and pour. Okay, somebody is asking. Yes, I saw that question. What will I do? I need a mantle. Please, what are the requirements? I have a small towel and my oil. What next? I will bless that oil for you. All of you that have your oil bottle, let me bless the anointing oil for you. If you have it around you there, lift it up. And after blessing it, you will pour a little on your mantle. That becomes your anointed mantle. You don't buy it. You don't say, how much do I use? We don't buy anointing oil. We don't sell oil. We don't sell mantle. We don't sell water. They are all prophetic uh, instruments. They are faith provokers. Lay hand on the sick. Lay mantle on them. Anoint the sick. Anoint yourself. I pronounce this oil blessed. Consecrated. Bring your water. If you have your water there, please. Let me bless your water. I pronounce your water blessed. You drink this water. You heal, you get healed. You anoint with this oil. You receive answers. Pour a little quantity on your mantle or your hand towel. That becomes your anointed mantle. Are you blessed? Are you getting something out of this tonight? Including the jump question. Or the wire question, do you see your level question? <laughs> Are you getting blessed? Do you get something out of this? Add to what you have before and become wiser. Let's just take one more and we will close for today. Our next Ask a Question broadcast will be on Friday. Trust I will return on time from the minister's conference. I will be participating in the minister's conference. With God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, Canaan land. And uh, I think it ends on Friday. Uh, I think it will end in morning session. So I'll be able to be with you for the evening time here on Ask Your Question broadcast. All right, people are saying they are blessed, they are blessed. Please, if you are blessed, keep joining every Monday and Friday and keep inviting other people who want to drive very high traffic here every week. Look at what we share tonight. Now it will bless generations. Let's deliver our people from ignorance, from exploitation, from blindness. Let's teach principles that makes life happy and rosy. That's what this platform is for. All right. Finally, daddy, what should I do to help my brother? He drinks a lot and keeps late nights. Our parents did not train, up, train us up that way. Did you hear that? What should I do to help my brother? He drinks a lot and also keeps late nights. Our parents did not train us up that way. Mm. Yes, you may think your parents did not train you up that way, but at a point in his life, another influence came into his life. Some wrong friends came into his life. So, Proverbs 22, verse 6, was not applied. Now, if, if you listen to Tony Point tomorrow morning, a, a question, a situation like this is there. Somebody said, Daddy, why do you always blame parents for the misbehavior of their daughter? That came from the question of somebody who said, my 17, our 17-year-old 17 daughter was impregnated by a fellow schoolmate. And we brought, them, we brought her up decently. Why should that happen? And I said, you miss bringing her up with Proverbs 22 verses. Somebody was reacting to that and said, why do I always blame parents? That there are daughters that were brought up by Christian parents in a Christian way, and they got to the university, higher institution, and they derailed. And I said, no. It's either that God is wrong or you are wrong. 
Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. God said, if you train them up in that fashion, when they grow up, they will not depart. So you now tell me that those who departed, departed despite training them up. No, something got missing. A child is a child from day one of birth to age seven of life. I kept saying that. What we call training is when they have grown up, their characters form, we are now shouting and yelling and, 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 and we are pain that they have become something else. You have, you've missed it. Can I say this to you? My wife can testify to it. We have three children. I have never lifted my hand to give a knock to any of my children or take a whip to whip them. I have never. And yet they grew up to be pastors. They grew up to be great people. They grew up to be decent and clean. How did I bring them up? The word of God from day one. The word of God that is able to train, build, create the fear of God, the love of God, morality, Bible. Day one of birth, a seven of life. That's when we either win them or lose them. But when they have grown, characters form, and we are now shouting, we are beating, we are scolding, it's too late. That's where we miss it. There is no child you will follow God's template. God is either lying or something is wrong. He says when he grow up, he will not depart. And somebody is saying to me, despite the fact that we train him, they still departed. Then who is right? Who is wrong? God cannot be wrong. So if a child grows up to become something else, then the template was not followed or was followed too late. He said train up a child. It's, it didn't say an adult. You can't train an adult. It's a child. So get them young. So this your brother that goes on drinking, something got wrong from the foundation. How do you do? Warfare players. His character has been formed. Hand him over to God. Fast for him. Do warfare prayers as we have taught it here. Google, bring all the Bible verses relevant. Claim him back. Stand in the gap. Put battle sheet behind it, fast once in a while, until God. He needs divine intervention, salvation in the Lord. When somebody is an adult, it will take only God. We will stop here today. All right. There are a lot of uh, cancer here. Warfare prayers. So right, Daddy. Warfare prayer. I am blessed, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your truthful teachings. Bad communication, corrupt good manners. I'm so blessed tonight. More fresh anointing, sir. Marriage is honorable, bed on the fight. Okay. Now, all the questions of tonight, we will take them on on Friday. I pray for everyone connected. May the Lord bless you, establish you. Those things that are challenges and needs in your life, financial, health wise, family, your children your career, your papers, immigration issue, financial issue, job issue, God will turn them into testimonies. Every area of your life will be touched. You are blessed. Have a wonderful time till we meet again. Femi Manuel is my name. I love you. Have a good night rest.